Hey guys, what's up? JB Illusion here, and we're doing new types of lore videos, mostly because putting an entire, or encapsulating an entire, you know, army and their great heroes who possibly have existed for 30 freaking years is actually really difficult, you know, to put together in a nice little bite-sized chunk. So this series is basically going to be my favorite Warhammer Special units, heroes, lords, yada, yada, yada. And the first one that we actually have is something that I think no one ever thought that they would ever see or has ever happened. A high elf who has actually, you know, fallen to chaos. What do you mean, fallen to chaos? We high elves are virtuous. It would never happen. Um, actually, oi! Don't listen to long ears over here. Tell your story. I think you should not. I will have no such thing done. I oh, get back here, you long-eared git. Oh, no. No. I oh, now get back to your story. Not like any dwarves at fall to chaos. Um, okay. Roll the intro. Archanon the Everchosen may have led one of the last great chaos incursions, but it was not the first that almost brought the old world to its knees. Two times before the chaos gods tried to consume the world in their taint, and twice it was fought off. During the second great chaos incursion, Othuan, the home of the High Elves, was under attack. Kalador Dragon Tamer, the greatest mage that had ever lived, managed to stem the stream of chaos to a mere trickle. By sacrificing himself to erect the Meneer Stones, he cast Chaos out of his realm and throughout much of the Old World. Kalidor exemplified his people. But there were some actions taken by High Elves during the first Great Chaos Incursion that were less than altruistic. Before the Meneer Stones were activated and the first Phoenix King created the Council of Princes to combat the threat, the High Elves were scattered and weak locked in a pitched battle with the seemingly endless forces of chaos. The situation was so dire that some High Elves seek to appease the Chaos Gods in hopes of placating them. That is how the Chala, the Denied One, came into being. A young elven maiden and family were cornered by the demons of Slanesh. They begged and tried to bargain for their lives. The demon prince of Slanesh took a fancy to the young elf maid and made an offer that no high elf should ever accept. He told them that he would spare their lives and immortal souls in exchange for the woman. Her family accepted the offer. She was sold to the demon prince and after Anarion, the now phoenix king, drove back the first wave, she went with it, driven mad by anger and betrayal. Now a slave of chaos made a deal of her own. Sunesh spoke out to her, and she responded, offering her soul to the Chaos God. Again, the offer was accepted. T'Challa was warped beyond all recognition. Her transformation turned her into a creature of the warp, a daemon prince. Her skin is smooth and milk-white. Her legs have been replaced by the lithe and sinuous body of a snake. Her multi-headed tail cracks like a whip and drips with poison. Her multitudinous arms grasp heavy bladed swords, and her deep blue eyes glow with an inner light, promising a terrible pain and immense pleasure to any who dare stand before her. Her visage strikes those unlucky enough to see her as horrendous, yet beautiful, only something that Slanesh could create. During the second Great Chaos Incursion, she got her revenge. Her family was slaughtered and their souls were consumed by Slanesh. When Kalidor finished his task, she, like all of her kin, were forced out of Ulthuan. In the Chaos Waste, the Chala leads the Tormentors, one of the greatest Slaneshi warbands to exist within the Blighted Land. She is as cruel as she is beautiful and as pitiless as she is beguiling. Here, she seeks the ultimate self-indulgence, 
and freedom from the shackles of law and order. But she seeks those only for herself and no other. Others can suffer and die as long as her wishes are fulfilled. Her servants are those who have tasted the poison that she secretes, which erodes the senses and the willpower of those lucky or perhaps unlucky enough to taste it. In battle, T'Challa is an enchanting sight, her snake-like body dancing to amuse her patron god. As delicate as her movements are, they are none the less lethal. Many an opponent has found themselves hacked to pieces, while they were entranced by T'Challa's movements. She's armed with the mark of Slanesh, poison swords dripping with her own fluid, as well as chaos armor. The most dangerous thing about her, however, is her dance. When she takes the field, she dances to honor her god and beguile her opponent. Each dance can cause a different effect upon herself or others. During the praise of Slanesh, T'Challa fights with dancing movements that enthrall her enemies, and her twisting body becomes almost impossible to hit. The dance of destruction causes T'Challa to swirl with frantic energy, cutting limbs and severing heads with her whistling blades. Her last dance, the dagger dance, is Chala's greatest defense. She twists her blades to make a wall of steel around her that no sword master can penetrate. These dances did not save her from having her physical body destroyed during the end times. However, Every daemon prince still lives within the warp after their earthly body is destroyed. There, D'Challa waits for her time to strike back against her kin that so selfishly sacrificed her to chaos.